Hi. Trying to keep you straight. You can see the ye old circa 1922 barn or whatever it is. More probably like 19... 24 maybe. I don't know. They built it after that hurricane in 1922. That sent them here to Homestead in the first place from their original. I might throw a Bible study in here. But I'm out here on this fine, beautiful, I'm wearing shorts, but a hoodie kind of day. To discuss something. See, the majority of people who watch my YouTube channel do not personally know me. They see me anyway, so why would they watch me on YouTube? That's just a, a fact. Probably the same for most people. They may peer over here out of curiosity, but I mean, like I said, they already know me, so. So, a lot of things I talk about on here, I don't necessarily talk with them about. Um, and a lot of my expounding on little Bible studies I do may not go, go with how they think, too, as well. Not everything is as cut and dry as some people think it is, just because that's where they feel the most comfortable. But I'm digressing. I'm kind of going on two different tangents, and here comes the train. I also need some sun because I feel I've got a lot of stress in my life right now, and seasonal defective, whatever disorder you call it, usually affects me, and I need sun. So that's another reason I'm sitting here with shorts on. So I've really been down lately. I've been having troubles with my youngest son. Teenage troubles. That challenged me. Every kid's different. This kid is different in the sense that he his upbringing was, a little, was different than theirs. There's a big age difference. And he doesn't realize that he's a little more spoilt than they were. Though he thinks his life's just terrible. I took him out of the public school system because I don't think he was getting what he needed there. They wanted him on Adderall and whatever other ADHD medications in between. Now, when he was younger, he was very, very hyper. When I no longer worked at the school we were going to, I put him in a micro school where he had more individualized attention. And there's a lot of kids kind of like him in there you know, as far as ADHD and those kind of things go. I've worked with a lot of ADHD kids and other type of spectrums or whatever in the past. And so I just don't think it's right to medicate a kid with a stimulant. What is ADHD? ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. And boys, you can spot it a mile away because they're, I mean, boys are hyper anyway because they're boys, but I mean, if you're ever in a classroom with some, you know, or church or whatever. Back in the day, they just beat their butts all the time. They got into trouble. There wasn't anything called an IEP or a 504. Um, as time went on, they started treating them with the ADHD meds. ADD is a attention deficit disorder without the hyper. Most girls fall into that category. Girl hyperness is a little different, especially as they get into the teenage years. Girls tend to be dramatic if they're this way, or they start drama. This is how it stimulates their dopamine lacking in this area of the brain. Believe me, I've saw that a lot in the schools too, and I see it now with grandkids. Drama stimulates them getting in the mess i call it the stir in the pot the more they are that way the more they stir the pot they get involved in stuff that's not their business and they end up getting in trouble whereas boys boys are not because they're boys they don't really gossip like a girl does but they'll be they can't get into dramatic things but they're more of a 
it's a movement thing or getting a trouble thing, getting attention kind of thing. Can't be making jokes, you know, just cutting up some worse than others. When I worked at a high school in our area, those kind of kids with those kinds of problems and some didn't have the greatest home lives or the greatest upbringing or the greatest examples got sent to my room. It really wasn't my room per se, but I was the main one in it. So they were always around me. I, never, I, I mean, I had to do some disciplining here and there, but I didn't sweat the small stuff with them because I knew their backgrounds. They confided a lot in me. There were some uh, people in the staff of said school that did not like me because they thought I was just giving these kids the answers to their very hard tests they would send them down to my room to work with. Stuff that I had to figure out to try to help them because, I mean, once you stop balancing equations in science or whatever, you can never do it again unless you're a teacher or you're in some kind of science laboratory. So it got to the point where one specific teacher, maybe more than one actually, but I know one for sure that I can remember. It's been a while. It's been about six years ago. Send each one of these IEP kids from her class to me with a different test. I know this was just to spite me. They all kind of had some of the same similar problems on them. So I'd just be working on the board, you know, working them out, explaining kind of, this is what we do. If they're left to do this on their own, due to their learning deficits, some had learning deficits, true ones, some were ADHD, some were math challenges. There are so many different levels of special ed. The, the, you know, when I was growing up special ed, I automatically thought of someone that just was on the low end of intelligence. That's not what it is at all. Some are. Some are Asperger's, some are autistic, some ADHD, some tra trauma, some personality disorders. It could be anything. And uh, they weren't giving these kids accommodations. They were letting me sit with them in class and then it was time for a test, we left the class. These kids were not getting taught in a special kind of way to try to comprehend what they were doing. They were being taught the same as the regular ed. And this is the school system in Louisiana. So I know they can't have a special teacher that teaches at a more one-on-one -on -one rate. And it's sad that, they, that this is the way it is. But it got to the point where every time these kind of kids or this set of kids, these are all kids are all grown and gone in, in their life now, up in their twenties at this point, if they had, they didn't want to be in class, they would act up, say, so come to me. Or teacher didn't want to deal with them, just send them to me with their assignments. And it came to the attention of my special ed boss, so to speak. I was in the room teaching some math on the board. Now, my degree is psychology, and I wasn't even finished with it then, but I knew how to do the math because I've been in these math classes. I pretended she wasn't there because she was talking to someone else, but she told them this should not be happening right here. She wasn't mad at me. I was helping these kids, but I was not their teacher. I was, technically I was hired to be an aide for one special individual who shall be running nameless, but still loves to call me on occasion. And sometimes I have talk and some, sometimes I don't because I don't have two hours of my life to, to talk. And I still love this person. This kid's just grown, but he is still just like a kid. So he's, he's awesome, very intelligent young man. Hyper as can be, whoa, still is. But anyhow, not long after that, there was a meeting being held and I had yeah, all staff, so I'm there. But this particular person over me said, don't go to this meeting. It'll just upset you. And I said, okay, I won't go. Don't have to be as early as anyway, you know. Come to find out, I was part of the subject of this meeting because they didn't like the way I was helping these kids. They thought I was just doing all the work for them and giving them the answers. 
if they realized how many kids were coming to my room, and that was the other part of the problem, that these teachers were getting in trouble for sending or being spoken to. I don't know what, I guess they were reprimanded or spoken to about sending me all these kids, basically to be the babysitter so they wouldn't have to deal with them or teach them. Now, am I faulting these teachers for this? No, I never told them to stop. Um, still friends with some of them. Well, I don't see them on a regular basis, and I'm not faulting them for that. I understand that trying to teach the ones that are behaving and learning is difficult when you have someone disruptive in the room. And if I can read them something out loud or help them context clues for whatever it is, or try to explain an equation, which, okay, that's fine. And these kids kind of saw me as like a mother hen in a way. I, that's why they still communicate me with me as adults. I almost feel like they were my own children because at that time, my daughter that was about their age chose to go back and live in Maine with some cousins. So I was desperately missing her and they kind of filled the void there, you know. Later I found out what that meeting was about. And that's when the different tests, mixed up tests for each kid came in. So, if that's accommodations, if they're getting the same test, that's not accommodations. Are you grading on a like curve, unbelievable curve? I don't know. But my point here is, because I, I, so I started to tell a totally different topic and I think I got sidetracked here but it, it's a very good it's a very good thing to get sidetracked on because the education system and that's what this boils down to needs to have more one-on-one -on -one time with kids that need it not just pass them through because I my son is ADHD I think he might have some spectrum issues because of the quirky and sometimes the ADHD have the quirks, but ADHD, like I said in a previous video, is now considered part of the autism spectrum. Their spectrum of there's uh, pretty much all disorder disorders, if they want to call it that, uh, are on a spectrum. Depression, anxiety, um, bipolar, all of them are on a spectrum because no one is alike. We are all unique individuals. We, just because you have four of the ten symptoms or whatever it is that DSMR three does for different things doesn't necessarily mean that they're right either but because that that book changes every so many years like for instance the first time i bought a dsmr3 it was in the uh, 1992 or 91 all the stuff that is considered the norm today be it wanting to be a boy instead of a girl girl instead of a boy uh changing your sex to another and all this whatever stuff that they do you know it's out there i ain't gonna get into all that but in that book it was considered a mental disorder flash forward to now the dsmr3 doesn't even hardly mention that so and the last one i had was from 2000 and probably 15 or 16 so i don't even know what the latest one says but all this medicating of people so they can stay focused especially in school. Why is that? Why wasn't that happening in the 80s? Oh, you get a butt whipping if you was acting a fool, yeah, but we had this thing called recess before school, mid-morning, after lunch, and then PE somewhere in there a couple of times a week, and afternoon recess. What kid can freaking focus for eight hours? An adult at work takes breaks longer than some of the breaks that I hear about in the public school system. Lock, locker breaks, when, when I was in high school, were five minutes. I think they're down to three. I can barely get to the toilet that fast, much less switch books. So a lot of them pack these pack, backpacks full of all their books and stuff they need so they don't have to go to their locker because they don't have time, which is bad for their spines. They are not even stopped growing. Why? So they can get as much time in there to, to, to educate them or whatever. And, um, anyway, I'm going to circle back. I left working at that school. It was a good school. I just didn't like that part. 
And neither did the special ed teachers that I worked with. But it was the, it's the state of Louisiana's public education system. And as far as federal goes, I don't know. I've only worked in one other education system, and that was in a blue state in Maine. And they had a much more larger budget for a very small, much smaller schools than I've worked at. And I really think that they had something smart going on. Were the taxes high? Oh, immensely. You know, as far as land taxes go. But they had good schools with a lot more programs. Anyhow, I'm digressing. So I went to work for a, of all things, a sporting good store because I've never played a sport in my life. So I learned about footballs and bats and all kind of stuff that I never paid attention to other than when my kids played. And so I wasn't putting my son into the local school because I knew they weren't on par with the school he came from. And frankly, I was tired of him taking medicine because he wasn't really growing that well. Because it's a known fact. People that take ADHD medicine don't eat as much and their, their growth tends to not be what it should. It's about kids. So I put him, in, okay. And I, I still help out at this place and I used to work for her on a full-time basis. Um, it's called a micro school. They're considered homeschool on paper because that's what they are, but they have teachers that teach them. No one is required to be on medication. You work at something until you get it. You don't just pass on to the next lesson when you should know the, what was in the lesson that came before in order to go on to the next lesson. Because that's what public school does. You have a lesson plan laid out and you go through it. And if somebody didn't get it, oh, well, we're going on anyway. That's all they can do. So that's where he's been going for the since fall 2017. Unfortunately, he is giving me behavior problems that in general, well, he, you know, we had the normal stuff, but stuff that I'm having trouble with with my grandkids in middle school age are occurring now with him because he's being exposed to it in the workplace. And that's just pathetic. I mean, he's a teenager and he blabs on himself. And he blabs on what goes on in his workplace. And I'm thinking, gee whiz, all these, I mean, it's just, let's just say if that was stopped, they probably would have no workers. And that's all I'm going to say on that. And I'm sure there's a lot of places like that. Personally, if I was running a place like that, I'd just assume run it myself and do, work with some people that just do these things. But anyhow, I'm just going to shut up. We've went on long enough. I came out here and had a ramble about the public school system, ADHD, ADAD, DD, ABCD, and all that'll be whatever. I do have an extensive research paper I might bring out one time and go over with y'all that I did on ADHD. There's nothing wrong with people with ADHD. I mean, most of them are highly intelligent. In fact, one of the books that I used in the research paper was written by a local area psychiatrist that was a CNN consultant for psychiatric health on ADHD. You know why? Because he's a 10 on the ADHD scale. But if you know how to concentrate those superpowers that ADHD people have, you can be very successful as he is. And in the book, there are is full of very, very successful people who are considered ADHD, very high ADHD. It's all on how you focus that. One of the ADHD superpowers is hyperfocus. Me, I've always been ADD and I didn't really know it until I did this paper and I realized it and then my kids, my daughters definitely. And of course, Anthony, you think the only one that wasn't is my oldest son. Nah, I don't think so. However, anyway, the superpower of, it's called hyperfocus. If they l latch on to something they like, they're interested in, they'll learn everything about it. Anthony would do that. He would go from, oh, he was interested in 
axes and how trees were cut down. He learned everything about that. Then he learned about swords and sword making and just whatever thing until he was done learning all he could at that in his within his grasp at that moment. But that is a superpower that they have. That's what said Dr. Dale Archer, MD, calls it the superpower of hyperfocus. If I'm really into something I'm doing, I, I can do the same thing. Which I think I'm going to start focusing some on writing. I do, I have a laptop, but I hate the flat keyboard. Because with carpal tunnel and flat keyboard, you just start, it messes things up and you don't even know it's gotten messed up while you're typing. I need to get a different keyboard. But anyway, I'll let y'all go. It's been over 20 minutes. If you've case stayed with me this far, thanks. For one mom of an ADHD kid, it's more than one ADD. Slightly ADD myself. That's why I'm so good on rabbit trails and so good at keeping up with Kevin's, if you watch Homesteading Off the Grid, conversations. I have no problem with that rabbit trail digressing thing because that's exactly how I talk. Have a blessed day.